In this video, I'll show you how to build a model planetary lander using a device called a microbit and an ultrasonic distance sensor. This project is inspired by landers like the Sky Crane system that lowered the Curiosity and Perseverance rovers onto the surface of Mars. During descent, these landers need to measure how far they are from the surface so they know when to do things like deploy parachutes or fire thrusters to slow down. A microbit is a little programmable board with some built-in inputs like buttons and outputs like a grid of LEDs and a buzzer, but it doesn't have a built-in way to measure distance. To do that, you need an ultrasonic distance sensor. This sensor emits a burst of ultrasonic sound and measures how long it takes to reflect back to the sensor, similar to how bats can locate objects with echolocation. You can connect one to your microbit and use your microbit to measure and react to distance. For example, when I move my hand close enough to the sensor, the microbit will sound its buzzer. When I move my hand away again, the buzzer stops. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at the sensor. I'm using the HCSRO4, which is a popular type of ultrasonic distance sensor. However, you have to be careful when you buy one that you make sure it is 3 volt compatible. Some of these sensors are only compatible with 5 volt power supplies and microcontrollers. And the microbit is just powered with a little 2 by AAA battery pack that only provides 3 volts. So if you are used to using these sensors with something like an Arduino that operates at 5 volts and you already have an Arduino kit with one laying around, it may not work with your microbit. The sensor has four pins. VCC, which is power. Trig, which stands for trigger. That's the pin that receives a signal from the microbit telling the sensor to take a reading. Echo, which is the pin that sends a return signal back to the microbit, and GND, which stands for ground. I have male-female jumper wires connected to each one of the pins. The male ends of those jumper wires are then connected to alligator clips, which are in turn connected to the microbit's pins. I have the VCC pin from the sensor connected to the microbit's 3-volt pin, the ground pin from the sensor connected to the microbit's ground pin, the trigger pin from the sensor connected to microbit pin 0, an echo pin from the sensor connected to microbit pin 1. Let's switch over to the computer and take a look at the code. We're going to be programming our microbit with a graphical programming interface called Microsoft MakeCode, but you can also use text-based programming languages like JavaScript and Python. If this is your first time using a microbit, check out the link in the video description for help getting started. MakeCode includes an extension that makes it very easy to work with an ultrasonic distance sensor. So start by clicking on Extensions, searching for sonar, which is another name for this type of sensor, press enter, click on the sonar extension to add it to your project. Then under the sonar block in the menu, you're going to drag this block out to your program. This is going to let you set the trigger pin, echo pin, and the unit that you want your measurement returned in. But you see this block is grayed out because we need to snap it into something else. So first we are going to create a variable called distance. I'm going to click on variables, click on make a variable, call my variable distance, and click OK. I'm then going to drag out the set distance to zero block into my forever loop, and then snap this block from the sonar extension into my variable block. Next, I'm going to change the drop down menus to the values that I want. So I do have the trigger pin connected to pin zero on the micro bit, but I have the echo pin connected to pin one. And I want this block to convert the units to distance in centimeters for me, rather than leaving it in a time in microseconds, which is the amount of time it takes for the sound to travel out and back. I'm then going to click down here on advanced in the menu, click on serial, and drag out the serial write value block. Change that to distance. And then I'm going to snap the distance variable into this block. This is going to print out the distance value in the serial monitor, which I will demonstrate next. Make sure you have your micro bit plugged into your computer, download the code and follow the on-screen instructions if necessary to pair your micro bit to your browser. Then go over here and click on show data device. And this screen is going to show two things. It's going to show a graph and a printout of the numbers. And right now you can't see it, but I just have my ultrasonic sensor sitting on a table aimed up at the ceiling, and it is measuring a distance of 128 centimeters. But if I start waving my hand back and forth in front of the sensor, you see that that number changes. So if I bring my hand very close to the sensor, which I am doing now, you see the number gets lower. As I move my hand farther away, the number gets bigger, and you can also see that change reflected on the graph. So 
This is how you confirm that your sensor is working. Instead of moving your hand in front of the sensor, you can also pick the sensor up and move it back and forth when aiming it at something like a table or a wall. So before you go any further in the program or in the project, make sure that your sensor is working. If you are getting strange readings here or readings that don't make sense, you will want to make sure all of your wires are connected properly and you don't have any loose wires or wires that are creating short circuits by bumping into each other and that you are using fresh batteries. Once you have confirmed that your sensor is working, you can click go back to continue editing your program and what you do now is really up to you, but remember that we're doing a project inspired by planetary landers, so we want to react and have the microbit do something when the sensor measures a distance below a certain value, indicating that when you've dropped it, it's getting close to a surface. So we can do that by going in here to logic and using an if statement, which allows us to execute some code only if a certain condition is true. So we're going to go back in here to logic and drag out this comparison block that's gonna let us compare two numbers. So the default is just zero less than zero, but we wanna compare our distance variable to something. So I'm going to snap my distance variable in there and then type in a number here, for example, 20 centimeters. So the code inside this if statement is only going to happen when the distance variable that gets measured is less than 20 centimeters. And then you can put whatever you want here inside this if statement. For example, if you want to do what I demonstrated earlier in the video and have the buzzer play a tone when the distance gets below a certain value, you can go here to music and drag out a block like play tone for one beat until done, snap that in here. And then now when your micro bit detects a distance less than the value you've set here, it will play this tone for one beat until that tone is over. Note that there is a difference between that and just the ring tone block, which will continue to play that sound until you use the stop all sounds block. Now, of course, the part of this project we haven't really talked about yet is physically building your lander. And if you've ever done an egg drop project, you can think of this sort of like that, where you want to build something that can hold some valuable cargo, like an egg, or in this case, your micro bit ultrasonic sensor and battery pack, and protect that cargo or payload when it is dropped. So I have a very basic design here that is just a cardboard box attached with strings to a plastic bag parachute with some cotton balls on the bottom to help absorb some of the impact. And very importantly, I also have two round holes cut in the bottom of the box to give the ultrasonic sensor a clear downward view. But this is just one very simple example. This is an open-ended project, so you can figure out what you want to design and build. But to protect your micro bit and your sensor, we recommend starting out with pretty low drop heights. Don't go dropping this off of a balcony or playground equipment right away and maybe consider dropping it onto a soft surface like carpet or grass as opposed to a harder surface like wood or concrete. An important troubleshooting note before you continue with your project. If your micro bit is either beeping continuously or not beeping at all, even though it was just working a few minutes ago, you might need to get fresh batteries. Our experience with testing is that the micro bit can have trouble powering everything on board and the sensor for an extended period of time without draining the batteries to the point where they can't also power the sensor. This is especially true if you are running the buzzer for a long period of time or lighting up a bunch of the onboard LEDs, which can require a bunch of power. So when developing and testing your code, it can be best to disconnect the battery pack and leave your micro bit connected to USB power. That way it gets its power from your computer and you do not drain the batteries and only switch over to the batteries when you are ready to go do an actual drop test. You may also have more luck testing different ultrasonic distance sensors. This is again a 3.3 volt compatible version of the HCSRO4. Although technically a two by AAA battery pack like the one that comes with the micro bit only provides a little over three volts, not quite 3.3 volts, which is again why the sensor may stop working fairly quickly as the batteries start to drain. We also tested the Ping ultrasonic distance sensor, which is popular but much more expensive than the HCSRO4 and found that it did work with the micro bit even though it is listed as being five volt compatible. So you might want to invest in a couple different ultrasonic sensors so you have a backup if the first one you try does not work well. 
Once you have everything set up, you can also test your lander without dropping it simply by holding it and lowering it towards the surface. For an interesting variation, you could try something like changing the pitch of the beep as your lander gets closer. For written instructions for this project, check out the video description. For over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.